Hey guys, welcome to yet another interesting and informative video by Simply Learn. In today's video, we're going to be learning all about adjacency. But before we begin, if you haven't subscribed to our channel already, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to never miss an update. So now, without any further delay, let's begin. This session will help you understand what an array in C is. After that, let's look at the array declaration and initialization in C, followed by how to access an array of elements, and finally, the types of arrays in C. Now, let's begin by understanding what an array in C is. An array is a homogeneous collection of elements of the same data type. That means similar type of elements are stored under one name called it as array name. And also the array of elements stored in a consecutive blocks of memory. Suppose you want to store 50 numbers. So for that, you must create 50 variables separately to hold the values. Instead, you can use arrays that contain more than one value under a single array name, which becomes easy to access the elements randomly and also avoids the memory overflow. Let's look at the diagram to see how the array elements are stored one after the other. Consider n elements to be stored in an array. And in that case, all elements are stored one after the other. Element 1 is the first element and the nth element is the last element of an array. In memory, whenever the consecutive free space is available, the memory is allocated as per the mentioned array size. Moving ahead, let's understand the array declaration in C. Array declaration is similar to the variable declaration. But in the array declaration, we mention the array size. Let's have a look at the syntax. We have data type followed by array name and the array size. For example, data type could be any type like int, double, float, char, etc. In this example, the data type is int. An array name is A and the size of an array is 5. Once the array is declared, the memory is allocated as per the mentioned array size. In arrays, the index starts with 0 to n minus 1. So, to store 5 elements, the index starts from 0, then 1, 2, 3, and 4. Always the index will be 1 less than the mentioned array size. Next, we have array initialization in C. One way of initializing the array of elements is during the declaration. Let's look at the following syntax. First, data type followed by array name and size and by using assignment operator equal to list out the elements separated by the comma operator inside the curly brackets and semicolon at the end. For example, int a of 5 is equal to the elements are 10, 15, 20, 25 and 30. As I said, the memory is allocated after the array declaration. And array elements are 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30 will be assigned starting from the index E of 0, followed by 15 at the index E of 1, and so on till the index E of 4. Next up, we have how to access array elements in C. We can access the elements randomly by specifying the array index. The syntax to access the elements is Mention the array name and the index of an element. Suppose you want to access element 15, and even though it is the second element, the index would be 1. So specify the array name and the index that is e of 1. Next, if you want to access the first element of an array, then the index would be 0. Similarly, to access the last element, we specify e of 4. And to access the third element, give e of 2 followed by e of 3 to access the element 25. Now we know what an array in C is and its declaration, initialization and the way to access the array elements. Let's move ahead and understand the types of arrays in C. Arrays are classified into three types. First we have one dimensional array, next two dimensional array and finally multi-dimensional arrays. Let us go through them in detail. First, let's start with one dimensional array. One dimensional arrays are also linear arrays that accept one subscript to mention the size of an array. 
look at the given representation of one dimensional array the elements are stored consecutively in the memory and we have already discussed the array declaration however let us go through the syntax once again we have a data type array name and size for example int as a data type y as an array name and the size is 15 now let us try to execute a simple program to understand the one dimensional array and let's see how to access and change the array elements using one dimensional array we got to print the array elements and for that we have declared the array name y and we have mentioned the array size 4 and we have also initialized the array elements and they are 5 10 15 and 20 and using the for loop i is equal to 0 till i less than 4 that means the index less than 4 it going to print all the elements so now let's run the program and here is the output the array elements are 5 10 15 and 20 next let's try to access the array element so suppose you want to access the second element of an array so you can mention the array index using the printf function so for the second element the index would be 1 so let's run it and here we got the second element that is 10 so suppose you want to change the array elements like for example you want first element to be 2 and not 5 So for that, mention the array name y, and the size. Sorry, the index zero, and equal to the new element that is two. So let's print all the elements and check whether the element is changed or not. So save the program and run. so as you can see the element is changed from 5 to 2 so now the elements are 2 10 15 and 20 if getting your learning started is half the battle what if you could do that for free visit skill up by simply learn click on the link in the description to know more next we have two dimensional arrays a 2d array is similar to a one dimensional array but it accepts two subscripts In 2D array the data is stored in rows and columns so using a 2D array we can perform matrix arithmetic operations like addition subtraction multiplication etc now let's look at the given representation of a two dimensional array the index of the 2D array starts with 00 then 01 02 and followed by the next row 10 11 and 12 let's have a look at the syntax to understand it in a better way we have a data type array name followed by two subscripts the first subscript describes the number of rows and the second subscript describes the number of columns present for example if we have two rows and three columns the index would be 00 01 02 01, and 1011 and 12 this indicates the first element is at the index 0 through 0th column and the second element at 0 through 1st column and so on Now let's execute a program using 2D array by taking inputs from the user. So using a for loop, variables i and j are used to take the inputs of rows and columns. Followed by that, we are going to represent the elements in a matrix format. So first, i is equal to zero, that is i is initialized to zero, and checks i less than two. And if the condition is satisfied, the control comes to the inner for loop. and the j is equal to 0 and checks whether j is less than 3 and if the condition is satisfied it will print the first element y of i j and again the control goes back to the inner for loop and increment the column by 1 that is j by 
and now i value is same that is 0 and j is incremented by 1 and it prints the second element of the matrix that is the first row and second column element and this process will continue till j less than 3 condition is invalid again the control goes back to the order for loop and increment the i value by 1 and prints the second row first column element and this process repeats it reaches the second row third column now let's run and see the output so enter the random elements okay and here we got the output the elements are represented in a matrix format now let's perform the addition operation on the two matrices we have matrix a and b of the size 2 into 3 and the elements of matrix a is 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 and the elements of matrix b is 6 2 3 4 5 and 1 so this uh, elements are added up and stored it in the matrix c so for that we have a statement c of ij is equal to a of ij plus b of ij so that means the element of a matrix a is added with the elements of matrix b and store it in the matrix c so the process happens the first element of the matrix a is added with the first element of matrix b and this will repeat till it reaches the second row third column so now let's run it and here we got the output so the element 1 plus 6 is added that is 7 and stored in the matrix c similarly 2 plus 2 4 3 plus 3 6 and 4 plus 4 is added and the value is 8 5 plus 5 10 6 plus 1 7 up next we have a three dimensional array a 3d array is a multi dimensional array that accepts three subscripts which is represented by the block size row size and column size the example for 3d array could be a cube and the syntax is data type array name followed by three subscripts the first subscript represents the number of blocks and the second one is the number of rows and the third subscript represents the number of columns for example int data type array name as a block size 2 row size 3 and the column size is 4 so now let's execute a program to understand the working of 3d array so we are going to execute a program using 3d array and for that uh, we have array name a and we have the variables i j and k so i represents the number of block and the size we have given is 2 j the number of rows and the size is 3 and k for the number of columns and the size is 3 so first it will take the inputs from the user and then print the output the working is similar to 2d array the only difference is that when i is equal to 0 it prints the first block of elements and when i is equal to 1 it prints the second block of elements and here the working is similar to the 2d array so let's run it So let's enter the random numbers. And here we got the output. So the first block of elements are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And the second block of elements are 1, 2, 3. 4, 5, 6, and 7, 8, 1. So, with this, we have come to the end of this session on Arrays in C. I hope this session was informative and interesting. Until next time, thank you, stay safe, and keep learning. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.